Hi, Paulina. Nice to see you've sent us your first set of essays. Let's take a look and see what you wrote here. The first one is about schools becoming more entertaining. Let's see what you said. School education plays an, an extremely important role in individuals' lives. However, many people argue about the importance of students' enjoyment during school years. Uh, in my opinion, schooling could and should be not only educational but also entertaining, as this might increase the level of involvement in a school process. It should be in the school process. This essay will examine some advantages of amusement in school and its strong connection with improvement of education. I think that's lovely. Okay, two little grammatical things, but nothing serious uh, by any stretch. Let's uh, continue. Firstly, children can study better when they are interested in learning material. Thus, games, media devices, and art projects could become valuable tools in teachers' hands. This should be teacher's S apostrophe, because it's not just one teacher. This is because of the rising of involvement level of students if they enjoy and like how and what they study. All right, that's a great sentence. It just becomes a little heavy with all these prepositional phrases. Look, of the rising of involvement level of students. You could have phrased this a little differently, making it flow much better and uh, just sound a little more advanced. So the expression used is this is because of the rising Mm, how about this? This is because this is because of increased student involvement when and if they enjoy and like how uh, or not even when and if. This is because of increased student involvement if they enjoy and like how and what they study. That's it, okay? And it becomes um, much cleaner like that. For example, a recent study. Look, it's a study. Why? Not E-I-E-S. Uh, so a recent study from Harvard University shows that participation in entertaining school activities enhances. Careful with your agreement here. These are basic grammatical problems. So look, you should have gotten rid of A, and then you could have said, Recent studies from Harvard University show that participation in entertaining school activities enhances. Now, why is this enhances? Because your noun is participation. So participation enhances pupils' attention and improves uh, memorization because we always prefer the noun over the ing when one exists, uh, up to 20%. Therefore, studying with enjoyment and play could uh, make a noticeable difference in students' performance and encourage them to attend school with greater desire. Okay, uh, that's fine. Um, let's see. Secondly, children engaged in various school leisure activities could practice valuable social skills such as teamwork, interaction with others, and problem solving. This is due to the fact that children could have opportunity to communicate in formal class situations and also in informal entertainment projects, which in fact could be extremely educational for them too. Take for example, uh, not Sweden school system, but the Swedish school system where pupils go for a walk to the nearest woods to find some patterns in nature which illustrate and confirm theoretical knowledge knowledge is uncountable they obtain during class lectures it can't be during and in it's either during or in consequently school children could have fun together learn how to apply their knowledge in practice and also build social relationships outside traditional class walls all right that's lovely too in conclusion whereas the main task of school education is to you don't grow a society uh, because they're not plants. You could say develop and uh, foster, uh, support, create, perhaps. So that's a good word, is to create a literate society. This process could be more engaging and interesting if combined with fun activities. Hopefully education and entertainment would intersect more. Mm, will, because hopefully doesn't need a kind of theoretical future, so you could just say will. Hopefully education and entertainment will intersect more often, and when they do, schools will develop rich delights in profound learning and growing generations of people. Okay, um, so this is a lovely essay. I actually like it 
quite a bit. I know that you were really discouraged with your previous test scores, but I thought it was a lovely essay in a lot of ways. It was on topic, which, uh, believe me, is um, not so frequent. Um, so it was on topic. I thought you had really good examples. I thought you understood the question and you answered the question. And I stress that because, like I said, uh, I've seen this essay written a ton of times and uh, this is not always the case. So you did a great job there. You did a great job with the coherence and cohesion aspect of this. So a lot of this was really, really, really well done. So let's talk about where uh, the problems were. For me, there was one problem and that was with grammar. Um, the grammar was, um, it's the... Uh, it's the basic grammar that you had a problem with. And this is why I want to kind of, um, you know, nip this in the bud as it were right now, because it's your first set of essays. Um, you did some advanced grammar and you were fine with that advanced grammar. But the thing is, is that um, your examiner will be less lenient with mistakes in basic grammar. They tend to be kind of more accommodating if you've gotten a mistake in like a, um, a more advanced piece of grammar. But if you've got multiple mistakes in general, in kind of inter, um, elementary or intermediate grammar, then they're kind of less forgiving. So I really want you to be careful um, with that. And I try to cover as many of these as I can. One of those places is subject verb agreement making sure your plurals are with plurals and your singulars are with singulars this is the kind of thing that I want you to be careful of, okay? But I thought it was a lovely essay, really, all the way around. So good job with this. Okay, off to a good start. Let's take a look at your second essay, uh, The Enjoyable Activity. Let's see what you said here. Um, undoubtedly, you don't mean patents. I'm sure you don't mean patents. I'm fairly certain you mean parents. So undoubtedly, parents should spend some quality time with their offspring and children's enjoyment. This is strange to me. Offspring and children's enjoyment. What does that mean? Uh, it almost makes me, you know what we use off, you know where we use offspring? We use it a lot of times for animals. Rather than saying, oh, the animal babies or the animal children, we say, you know, the dog and its offspring, okay? So, uh, especially here when I saw you separate this from children's enjoyment, that's the first thing that kind of came to my mind. So be careful with this word. I don't know, even if you did replace this with children, I don't know why you have enjoyment separately. So if I had to, maybe I would change it around like this. Undoubtedly, parents should spend some quality time with their children and their enjoyment. But that's still kind of strange. Um, as one of the main factors of engagement should play a significant role in an activity choice. Okay, the whole sentence is strange, really. Um, let's see. Uh, I don't, ah, I see what you're trying to say here. Now it makes sense. Okay. Okay, so essentially I was reading it wrong, and part of the problem uh, and the reason for that is maybe you needed some sort of punctuation here. You can see how um, incorrect or missing punctuation can really change the meaning. I think what you really could have used here was a semicolon right here, and then no and. Okay, uh, so let's try it like that. Undoubtedly, parents should try, no, parents should spend some quality time with their offspring. Children's enjoyment, as one of the main factors of engagement, should play a significant role in an activity choice. Okay, it's a little better like that. It's still a little awkward, though, even with that correction. I partly agree with uh, the opinion that there are much more variants of child parent time apart from reading. However, books remain an, an indispensable tool for adults which help connect with a baby and also develop imagination, thought process, and creativity in a young brain. Okay, so again I had a problem here because all of a sudden you're telling us what you agree with and you start talking about reading and that felt really unnatural because no one ever addressed the issue of reading before this. So it's kind of strange for you to, um, to say, oh, you know, well, I think this. Um, it, it just goes a little bit against what we're used to in terms of 
an introduction. So it would have made a lot more sense um, if you had said something about reading here and then said, I partially, I partly agree that um, there are more variants of quality child parent time apart from reading. Okay. But you needed to mention something about reading before you actually said that you agree with this idea. Um, and then there were some grammar things. An indispensable tool. Um, thought process and creativity and grammar. Okay, and then the rest of it is fine. So, on the one hand, in a modern world, reading, uh, careful here, after remodal verb, no S. You need the bare infinitive. So, reading could seem out of date if compared to with games on gadgets, modern crafts with an S, or active outdoor play. This is because all these re activities could instantly give children some bright emotions and completely engage them in the game process. For example, finger painting with a parent could provoke some visual associations in a child's mind, as well as tactile sensation and color mixing practice. Therefore, a child can see, touch, and feel at the same time, which undoubtedly stimulates creativity, especially if he or she enjoys the process. Okay. On the other hand, uh, however, reading a book opens a window into a story which makes us uh, children use your imagination and gives long-lasting feelings of enjoyment and engagement. This is due to the fact that children tend to live through the plot with the main heroes. I think when you say live through, I think you mean like they experience. Is that what you're trying to say here? It's not entirely clear. For instance, many Western families have a bedtime routine with reading a book. Uh, and as a, this is awkward, have a bedtime routine. Uh, with, uh, I don't know. Let's see. For instance, many Western families have a bedtime routine, which includes reading a book. And as a consequence, children practice their memory by following the story development every night. And also, they could think about the possible continuation of the book and use their creative imagination. In conclusion, though reading might seem like, like a passive activity, it could develop useful skills and improve a child's thinking. Thus, I feel that parents should not forget about books and use them as well as other options to spending time together with pleasure and use. Okay. Um, let's see about something. Now, um, I really liked that you talked about creativity so much. You talked about it in both paragraphs. And that's lovely because, in fact, that's the area that most people miss here. Um, they don't talk about creativity. You did. And so that's very exciting. Um, what I didn't really get was the idea of better skills. That was missing for me. So I just want to read through this one more time and see uh, where you talked about other skills that are developed, okay? Maybe you did, but I didn't really catch it. You said emotions. Okay, great. You said engages them. Okay, great. But where are, where are the skills being developed? Uh, provoke tactile sensations, but is that a skill? Color mixing practice, again, is that a skill? So you were supposed to be talking about skills here. Again, here, enjoyment and engagement, not skills. Um, you talked about memory. Okay, okay, fine. So you could say that improving their memory is a skill. But uh, as you can see here, other than... Um, was it? Yeah. Here, I didn't really get a lot about skills. Okay. Um, yeah, there's really not a lot there. And so it kind of felt like you were, you were talking and you were, you know, writing about all these very interesting things, but not a hundred percent on, on topic, not a hundred percent, but it was still good. I found more awkwardness in this essay than on the other one. Um, towards the end, I thought it got stronger. So there were some nice elements of language towards the end. Uh, do, 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 where was it? It was somewhere around this paragraph that there was some nice language that I definitely enjoyed. Okay. But I want you to be careful with some of this stuff. Um, so you know what you have to work on now. You know where some of the areas of strength and some of the areas of weakness are. 
Um, it's interesting. There were other areas of weakness in one paragraph and others in the other. Okay, so just keep all of this stuff in mind. Now what you need to do is correct both essays based on this video. Um, also, you need to write an error correction list where you write the mistakes and then the corrected version next to each mistake. The third thing you need to do is send us a new set of essays, um, really applying everything you've been learning both through the videos and in the course as well. So go ahead, send us all these three things in the next day or so, and let's see how you do, okay? I'll be looking forward to your next set of essays, Paulina, so good luck.